Welcome to Church Online with Northbourne Baptist. We are so glad you could join us today. I'm Pastor Graham, and here in Victoria, we're very thankful that the COVID restrictions are slowly easing. But at the moment, because of the four square metre rule, we'll need to stay and keep our services on Zoom uh, for the present time. And we'll let you know when uh, those sort of regulations change. Um, it is so good to be together to worship God. Psalm 150 says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let's open our service together in prayer. Father God, we thank you that we can come together and praise you and lift you up. Uh, regardless of what's happened this week, uh, wherever we are today, whether we're in our lounge rooms, whether in bed, lying in bed, whether we're in our cars, we come together to praise you, Lord, that you are the, the wonderful love and grace and power that unite us together. And we lift up your name and glorify you and ask that you come among us Come among your people to everyone listening today. And Lord, may your grace and mercy be mighty to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Today's Bible reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 41 to 47. Those who accepted his message were baptised, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous sights were done by the apostles. All believers were together and had something in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning all. Let us pray for the families in, at MBBC. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks to the families at MBBC. We continue to pray for the families as they go through this time of difficulties when COVID is still around. We ask that you continue to give them creative ways to connect with each other despite the restrictions. Father Lord, we continue to pray for ways that families can connect to connected with each other despite their distance, even with their extended families. And Father Lord, we thank you for the time of uh, restriction lift lifting so that people can connect with each other soon. Father Lord, we pray for those children who are in examination or completing their examination. Father Lord, we pray for uh, a time of relaxation during the holidays and a time of refreshment when they start again. Father Lord, we pray for the families who are affected by the storm. We pray that soon power will be restored and communication would return to them. We pray for all this in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. God is great and God is good. Let us pray. Dear Lord, open our ears to hear your word and know your voice and speak to our hearts and strengthen our wills that we may serve you today, now and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A new baby being born is one of the most exciting and memorable events in everyone's life. It is a truly momentous occasion, filled with joy and happiness. Prince Harry and his wife Meghan 
On June 4, announced the birth of their baby girl, Lilibet. And they were blessed with the arrival of the, their second child. They remain grateful for the love and prayers they have felt from across the global. In the book of Acts, chapter 2, describes the exciting news, the birth of the Christian church. A dramatic move of the Spirit of God reached down and created the first church. The Holy Spirit was present in a very special way when God created the New Testament church, a spiritual community of Jesus Christ. In today's message, we want to look at what happens when the Holy Spirit comes upon His people, when the Spirit is in control of the Christian community. The coming of the Holy Spirit ignites the witness of disciples because He came to dwell in their hearts. The work of the Holy Spirit empowered the witness of the disciples to reach the laws. The move of the Holy Spirit inspired Peter's first sermon and cut through the hearts of the people. And the call of the Holy Spirit draws people every day to join the fellowship in the church. Since God has given us His Holy Spirit, we are empowered to fulfill His commands. Number one, the Holy Spirit empowers us to fulfill God's command to fill the earth. What happened when the Holy Spirit came upon His people? In Acts chapter 2, verse 41, those who received His word were baptized, and there were at that day about 3,000 souls. After Peter preached, explaining to them that the Jesus they crucified was the Messiah, God's Son, and there were about 3,000 people believed. In a very special way, God brought over 3,000 people into His kingdom. And then, in verse 47, and we are told that in added in addition to this initial 3,000 new converts, the Lord brought new believers to this Christian community every day. And this was repeated several times in the book of Acts. And this was a visible fulfillment of God's command to multiply and fill the earth. The history of the Christian church is a perfect illustration of how God continues to fill the earth with His children. The fact we are here today is a fulfillment of the creation command to multiply and fill the earth. When we continue to yield ourselves to the rule of Holy Spirit, to be filled with the Spirit, He will empower us to be His witnesses. And wherever we go, represent and reflecting Him, sharing with others what we have seen and heard, and we are obeying the command to multiply and fill the earth with God's children. And number two, the Holy Spirit empowers us to fulfill God's command to have a loving relationship with Him. Men were created in God's image. Besides, being His representatives and reflecting Him, it also implies a close relationship between the Creator and the created ones. We learn from the book of Genesis chapter 3 how God would come to the garden to visit Adam and Eve. We read about Enoch, Noah, walk with God continue in that loving relationship with God. And God wants a close and loving relationship with His people. 
And this loving relationship is expressed in obedience. God wants Adam and Eve to obey his instruction not to eat the fruits of the certain tree in the garden. However, they failed. God wants Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob to be obedient to him. At Mount Sinai, he gave the Israels his laws and showed them specifically how they could obey him. Obedience is not a means to enter into a relationship with God. Rather, in order to experience the fullness of this loving relationship with God, His children are to obey Him. And we learned from the Old Testament how God's people constantly disobey Him. After a long period when the Israel had forgotten God's word, and during the rule of King Josiah, they rediscovered the written scrolls in the temple. In 2 Chronicles chapter 34, verse 31 to 32, And the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of the covenant that were written in this book. Then he made all who were present in Jerusalem and in Benjamin stand to it. And, in, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God and the God of their fathers. They read God's word and obeyed. Jesus taught his disciples in John chapter 14, verse 23, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Obedience to God is important to continue this loving relationship, and God wants his people to obey him. And what do we see on this Pentecost day? After Peter's sermon, 3,000 people believed in Jesus Christ. And what did they do immediately? They were baptized. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Jesus commanded his disciples to baptizing the new believers. And here we saw the disciples obeyed Jesus' command and baptized. Later, Whenever and wherever individuals come to Christ, they were baptized. But the, faith, the, but the very basic reason for baptism is our obedience to Jesus Christ. When we put our faith in Him and we are to obey Him, the same is with us today. God has clearly told us His desire for us in the scriptures. The scriptures show us what and how to obey God. And this is the reason we encourage and urge you to be a student of God's word. We continue to urge you to come to the growth groups or any Bible study groups so we know what to obey. And by obeying Him, and we will continue to live and enjoy a loving relationship with Him. Number three, the Holy Spirit empower us to fulfill God's command to live in harmony and unity. At the time of creation, 
God wants people to live in harmony and unity with each other. And God used the husband and wife relationship, the most intimate form of human relationship, to illustrate this. In the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 24, that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. At creation, God's command and his desire is for mankind to live in harmony and unity. Again, we fell in this area. There were polygamy and murder. And at Mount Sinai, God gave his people the Ten Commandments. If we take a closer look at these commandments, they are actually rules and guidelines to help us to be united and harmonious. It is God's house to rule to have a peaceful community. In Psalm chapter 133, verse 1, how good and precious it is when God's people live together in unity. Now, what happened when the Holy Spirit came upon His people? In S chapter 2, verse 42, and they devote themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship. Fellowship means to have something in common. And they came together to listen to the apostles' teaching. They worshiped together. And these are all expressions of harmony and unity. And moreover, we read in verse 44 to 45. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They show property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. They show their possessions and belongings and share it with those in need. Their harmony and unity were expressed in form of generosity. And this sharing of belongings and possession is out of their generous heart. And this is a community that is harmonious, united and generous. In the rest of the New Testament scriptures, we find many examples of how Christians helping each other. As a church, we have certainly experienced God's generosity towards us. Our challenge and responsibility are to learn to be generous to others, not just to those in this church, but also in our local community and to the people in other countries. The scriptures is full of teachings reminding and showing us how to live in harmony and unity. When God poured His Spirit on His people on the day of Pentecost, and it gave birth to a new community, a community that includes all those who put their faith in Jesus Christ. This new community continue to multiply and fill the earth with God's spiritual children. This new community lives in God's love and faithfulness through obedience. This new community is to live in and demonstrate harmony and unity. God did not just give us the command and let us alone. He also given us His Holy Spirit. When we let Him take hold of us, He will give us the power to be His witness, to tell others how about Him, and to multiply and fill the earth with His spiritual children. He will enable us to live in a loving relationship with God through obedience. And He will give us the power 
we need to live in harmony and unity with each other. Are you living in this spiritual community? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that by your grace and mighty power, and we have been given the privilege of serving you. We thank you for the special powers and abilities you have given to us. And you are the source of the many different spiritual gifts that you distribute to us so that we can help each other and build up your church. Empower us to love you with all our hearts, soul and mind, and to love others as we love ourselves. We thank you for your gracious presence during within us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching our online service from Northbourne Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Graham Prentice, and we'd love to connect with you further. You can do that in several ways. You can press the subscribe button on your screen. You can have a look on our website at northbournebaptist.com. You can have a look at our Facebook page, our church app, or you could jo join us live on Sunday mornings. And if you need anything, any, any help with anything, please ring the church office, 985-98101, or send an email to office at northbournebaptist.church. Blessings for the week ahead.